want to spend the weekend having a sleepover and playing video games with your friends. Back to back episodes of CTV's The Big Bang Theory, tonight at 8, 7 Central. It was a huge Canadian breakthrough at a small Toronto lab some 50 years ago. The discovery of stem cells by Canadians has led to tantalizing research into how we might cure some of the world's most pernicious diseases. This global milestone was celebrated last night at a gala in Toronto, and here to tell us all about it is stem cell pioneer Dr. James Till and James Price, the newly minted present CEO of the Canadian Stem Cell Foundation. Gentlemen, welcome both of you to the show. Dr. Till, I want to start with, with you. And uh, back in that lab when you were sitting there atop uh, Princess Margaret Hospital, was there a eureka moment where you finally understood, wow, we've discovered something really important? Well, it wasn't the kind of eureka moment where you find an a nugget in a bed of gravel. It wasn't that kind of thing. I mean, the stem cell wasn't like the nugget. Uh, it, it had been searched for for 50 years or more before we were doing our experiments. And the att effort was to see what they look like. I mean, to recognize them by a difference in appearance from the other cells. Right, absolutely. And, no. and, it didn't, and that, that didn't work. So our eureka moment was, uh, actually it was Dr. McCullough hit the my uh, colleague who had the eureka moment. Uh, we were doing some experiments in transplantation of irradiated mouse marrow cells into irradiated mice. And uh, then looking at, at the uh, blood forming tissues of those animals at different times after the irradiation and mm. transplantation. And he happened to have designed, we, we had designed the experiment, that one of the uh, points we were called them points we were taking was uh, ten days after and and that happened to fall on a Sunday so he came in on a Sunday the lab was quite quiet at that <laughs> point and he was looking at the blood forming tissues of these mice and on the spleens which are which are a blood forming organ in the mouse they aren't in the human he saw little lumps bumps and he always said well when I see things like that, I count them. So he counted them. And then he looked at some more animals that had received different numbers of cells and saw a different number of lumps. And in fact, twice as many cells transplanted, twice as many lumps. Well, wow. and that, that he, he knew that was interesting. And it, I, he came in the next day, uh, on Monday, and showed them to me, and I knew it was interesting. Fabulous. Now, James, how has uh, Canadian medical research and researchers around the world built on that initial discovery? Well, you know what, their contribution has been quite enormous. If you actually look, since the Second World War, there's really been two major advances in biology and medicine. One was the discovery of DNA, and everybody knows about Watson and Crick. The second is the discovery of stem cells by Tillam McCullough. And it wasn't just their discovery in 1961, but Canadians have continued to lead the field. We've made, the f we first discovered neural stem cells, retinal stem cells, cancer stem cells, skin-derived stem cells. And it's really based on the legacy of, of Dr. Till and Dr. McCullough. Uh, Canadians have really been, made major contributions in this field. Now, uh, Dr. Till, in, uh, I guess it was 1998, uh, an American scientist discovered embryonic stem cells, which really opened up a whole new phase of, of potential medical applications. Have you been impressed at the speed with which innovation has occurred, uh, occurred within this slice of science? Oh, yes. I mean, after the, uh, uh, that uh, development with uh, embryonic stem cells in 1998, the field took off. It had been relatively static. I'm talking about the field of stem cell research. It had been relatively static up to that time. And uh, because of the potential of being able to e e uh, use embryonic stem cells in, in regenerative medicine, uh, it created enormous interest. And then uh, subsequently, the discovery of induced pluripotent stem cells, which, at, le at least in many of their properties, resemble uh, embryonic stem cells. That has given another big boost to the field. And I, I was astonished with the finding of uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. I, mm -hmm. I big, big game changer. Now, James, what are you going to do with your foundation? Because uh, we are pioneers in this field, but when it comes to funding stem cell research, we do an okay job, but we're not best in the field. Yeah. We're not the world leader. Uh, what role is the foundation going to play? Well, you know what? We're, we actually just are officially launched the foundation as we mark the 50th anniversary 
Um, you know what? We can be proud. Canadians have pumped well, punched well above, above our weight class for, for a long time. But we've seen other jurisdictions around the world make major investments in stem cell research. California, for example, in 2004, Governor Schwarzenegger created the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. It was a $3 billion investment. That was $300 million a year of new money to support stem cell research. In Canada, we fund about $75 million a year from all sources. Um, if Canada wants to continue to be competitive and we want our scientists to continue to be the contributors that they are, I think we need to look at ways to engage much more funding, both private and public funding. And the foundation is really about two things. It's about, one, getting uh, people to be a little bit more aware of what, of what our track record is in, in stem cell research. We're moving into um, a, a whole wide range of new clinical trials for, for patients, um, and it's going to start touching the public in a, in, a, in a bigger way. And secondly, is that making sure that Canada's stem cell future, if you will, um, that we're right there. We're at the, we're at the, uh, the leading edge in terms of moving these, this research into therapies for people. Well, great, gentlemen. Uh, congratulations on all your work. And, and Dr. Till, especially you, it's a long overdue uh, recognition of a, a really world-changing, life-changing uh, medical breakthrough. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time Great, today. Thank you. Great. Well, we are still uh, waiting on uh, the uh, Pilots Association for their live press conference. We'll bring that to you as soon as it happens. Next, though, we're going to look into this growing debate of East versus West in this country, oil sands versus manufacturing, the richer provinces versus the poorer. Our next guest says this country is headed in two different directions at the same time, and this presents an interesting potential comeback opportunity for the Liberal Party. For real? Let's find out right after this short break. Introducing Juicy Fruit Desserts. All the flavor of strawberry shortcake in a delicious stick of gum. Desserts Gum from Juicy Fruit. Are you looking for great value and security with more benefits than any other life insurance coverage in Canada? Canada Protection Plan is the largest supplier of no medical life insurance in Canada. For pennies a day, help protect your loved ones during these uncertain times. If you're age 20 to 80, you can apply. Compare our rates and benefits. You could save 30% or more, and you're under no obligation to buy. Call now, toll-free, 1-877-517-6060. These are the Bose QuietComfort 15 noise-canceling headphones, engineered to make air travel quieter and music more enjoyable. Bose was the first to introduce noise-canceling headphones over 20 years ago, and these are the new standard. Seth Porges of Popular Mechanics states that compared to the competition, the QC15s are vastly superior. Try them for 30 days risk-free with free shipping. QuietComfort 15 headphones, only from Bose. Not Audi, not Lexus, not BMW. Only Infinity is the winner of ALG's 2012 Luxury Brand Residual Value Award. And Only Infinity has won it four years in a row, which means an Infinity is projected to hold more of its value longer than any other luxury brand in Canada. So the question is this, do you prefer luxury that fades or luxury that lasts? Right now, lease an all-wheel drive G sedan starting at $325 a month for 24 months. When you have diabetes, you're never really sure what's happening inside your body. Well, inside every One Touch Ultra Blue test strip is Double Sure technology. It measures each blood sample not once, but twice. Don't just be sure, be Double Sure. Welcome back to National Affairs. While well, public polling since the last federal election has shown that the once mighty Liberal Party is trailing behind the NDP with the support of a quarter or less of Canadian. Uh, I guess willing to vote for them in the, in the coming election. Our, our next guest, however, thinks the Liberal Party is fast approaching a moment of truth. Rebirth or possible extinction. Extinction that could come to pass within the span of the current Conservative government and the election to come. To discuss the challenges and opportunities facing the Liberal Party, we're joined by John Duffy, best-selling author and principal at the consulting firm Strategy Corp. John, great to speak with you. Interesting piece in policy options. I read it. Uh, it was concise to the point. And it opened up, uh, I thought, a neat window onto the challenges and opportunities that the Liberal Party faces. Let's talk about some of those sure. challenges first. You, you really drilled down on three of them. Leadership as an opiate, a kind of Oxycontin that the party's <laughs> got addicted to. Go to that a bit and why you think maybe the party's made some good choices right now. Yeah, well, part of the problem for the Liberals has been that for years they've run everything. Uh, their organization, their fundraising, their communications, their policy development through the prism of leadership politics, who will be the next